Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Church in Bethesda's online broadcast. My name is Ryan Phipps. I'm the senior minister. Welcome back if you've been here before, and a very special welcome if you're joining us for the first time. Grab your favorite morning beverage, coffee, tea, etc., as we listen to some beautiful music from our talented singers and musicians to point our heads and our hearts in the right direction as we begin worship today. Enjoy. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing
is all I seek And when your eyes are on this child Your grace abounds to me Well, thank you for that beautiful music, guys, and thank you for sharing your talents with us that draw us closer to God and closer to one another. We pause every week at this time during our broadcast to participate in something that we call the passing of the peace. It's a time for us to say hello to one another here in this digital environment. Whatever platform you're watching on right now, find the comments threads on that page and let's say hello to one another. And if you care to do so, we love seeing where you're watching from. If you're watching this from another city, state, country, anywhere around the world, chime in with that as well. Peace be with you. All right, well, welcome if you're just now joining us. My name is Ryan Phipps. This is Church in Bethesda. Thank you for joining us for our lesson from the scriptures today. Let's get into it. We have been going through a series on the fourth and fifth chapters in the book of Ephesians called How to Live an Exceptional Life. And it's my hope that as we move into the second half of the series that you're starting to see these seemingly arcane passages from Scripture as more practical and maybe even more relevant to your life today. I also want to say again, as I've been saying every week, that when I say the phrase exceptional life, I don't mean a life that is morally or religiously superior to someone else's life, but rather I mean a life that stands out because of how unusual and atypical it is, for that is what the word exceptional means. Today, I want to talk about the topic of words. Words, more specifically, spoken words. The words that we say aloud to others and how some simple alterations in this department of our lives can change not only our own lives, but the lives of others as well. Our passage for today says this, Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, 
so that your words may give grace to those who hear. That's Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. I have two young children, ages 6 and 8, and as anyone with kids knows, the back seat of a parent's car is like a war zone. The seats are always covered in crumbs and juice and mud, boogers, sometimes blood, toxic waste, you name it. And to keep this landfill, if you will, at bay, I keep this battery-powered car vacuum in the trunk of my car. And when there is a big mess, I take a few minutes and I vacuum it up. And yes, I also have a method for removing boogers from your car seats. If anyone is interested, send us a direct message. I've got great pro tips for you. Anyway, this vacuum is a simple device. It doesn't hold much, you can see that. But if you take it apart, you can see that inside there is this filter. This is in there so that larger pieces of garbage don't get past it and damage the motor that would get sucked inside and shut it down. You can see some of those things here. Uh, we have some hair. It looks like we have some, I think it's pecans. Oops, pecans. And there is a, looks like a bit of a fingernail in there. All of those things, if they got past this, could shut down the image, the engine of this device and cause it not to work. So this filter really is everything. And I take very good care of the filter. I check it all the time. I clean it to make sure it's free of debris so that the, back, the vacuum can work as it's intended to. What is my point this morning? Well, my point is simply this. This filter is what I think about when I read this passage from Ephesians. In fact, I think that in a roundabout way, that what this filter does for the vacuum that it lives in is what the Apostle Paul is saying we ought to do with our words. He's not just talking about what we say but more importantly, what we refrain from saying. Again, the passage says, let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need so that your words may give grace to those who hear. Notice that language. He's telling us what not to let out. In other words, if we filter out all of the evil talk, what remains will be that which builds others up, which gives grace to those who hear. And this is where a lot of people get advice like this in the Bible very mixed up, or they deliberately distort it sometimes. This passage is not telling us to add a bunch of encouraging words before or after our hurtful words to make them easier for someone to hear. No, that is disingenuous. That's passive aggressive. That's manipulative. All of those things are in and of themselves evil. Now, the Apostle Paul is talking about applying a filter between our minds and our mouths, to catch words that are vengeful, hurtful, judgmental, etc. And when we do that, the motor, if you will, keeps working as it should, instead of breaking down and burning up and turning off. And this is such an important lesson that we can apply in our lives in very practical, everyday ways. 
What's more, it can improve our relationships at home, at work, our interactions in parking lots and banks and grocery stores, wherever. It's not always about what we say to others that makes the difference. More often than not, it's about what we don't say. That's the lesson of this passage about words. And I am a master of hindsight at this. I can think of so many times in my life where I should have held my tongue, where I should have applied the filter, and I didn't. And in that moment, I did a little bit more damage to the world and to the people in it. I wish I could go take all of those words back, but I can't. What I can do is apologize and restore what I broke, but that takes so much more work than it would have if I just had held my tongue in the first place. And if you're in the same place in your life today, if you look at your past behind you and you see a bunch of words that you've spoken to others that you regret, it's going to be okay. Today is a new day where you can start putting this into practice in your life. And when you miss it, when you forget to apply the filter, just be honest, be humble, and just apologize to whoever it was that got pelted with all of the stones and trash and boogers. We must care for the filter in us. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. As we move into a time of communion, receiving the Eucharist together now, you can begin to gather the communion elements in your home. It's also okay if you just want to use this as a time of silence and stillness to reflect on this lesson here today. But as we spend a few moments in quiet, just pondering, meditating on what we've heard, let's remember what these words mean for us today. And most of all, what the heart of God that's communicating these words means for us today that our mistakes are forgiven, that we have the ability to restore relationships that we've messed up, and that God wants to help us do it better moving forward. Let's think on these things for a few moments as we pause, as we breathe, and as we listen. Amen.
Good morning, SIB. My name is Jeff, and I'm here to bring you our Just for Click segment. Today, we're talking about encouragement. I have a book I'd like to share with you, and it encourages you to be yourself. Be who you are. That's hard part. Be who you are. Be old, be young, be a different color. Or everything you need to be you. Speak your language, learn in your own way. Be proud of where you're from and be your own family. Just be who you are. Be silly, be brave. Dance, play, discover, learn, and read. Share your feelings, happy, mad, sad, silly, scared, and proud. Just be who you are. Try new things. Be confident, stand up for yourself. Be energetic. Be peaceful. Be the best thing that you can be. Just be who you are. And now, I also have an activity to share with you. This activity will remind you, will, will remind you to think about what you say and to be an encourage it to others. This is how it will be. This this is the first step. First, call it the face and the tongue. Be creative. Second, cut cut out the face, tongue, and encouraging words. Third, take the tongue to the mouth. Four, take the words that you choose onto the mouth. You can also add your own encouraging words right here. Thank you for joining us today. And we hope you enjoy this activity. Have a great week. And remember to beat yourself and to encourage others. Bye. Well, thank you once again for joining us for worship today, especially if you joined us for the first time. Thank you for spending some of your time to be with us and grow together with us. We started a new venture this past Thursday, and we'll continue doing it every Thursday from here on out. One thing that we noticed uh, at the beginning of COVID as we began broadcasting our service online is that when our church came back to gathering in person, we still had all of these people from around the world that were watching our broadcast. And we wanted to find a way to stay connected with those of you that we are now calling our remote family. Those of you who worship with us from another city, another state, or another nation. So this Thursday, last Thursday and every Thursday moving on, we're sending out an email to all of those who are subscribed to our e-newsletter about how we can be praying for you. The reason that we care so deeply about that is we want our community, whether it's here in person in Bethesda or those of you watching from around the world, we want to be a community of people that celebrates with one another in the good times of life and that helps and prays for and carries the struggles that you might be experiencing in your life. We want to do that together with you. So firstly, if you're not getting that e-newsletter, you can subscribe to it at churchinbethesda.org slash get hyphen 
updates. Again, that's churchinbethesda.org slash get hyphen updates. You'll see two things you can subscribe to on that page. Number one is our community news, which is where that prayer newsletter will go out. Secondly, if you would like to have daily meditations sent to your inbox every morning, we record an audio podcast Monday through Friday every week of the year that you can listen to before you begin or as you end your day. If you'd like to get that, you can check that second box on that page. And again, the URL is church in Bethesda.org slash get hyphen updates. I'll also be, um, for those who did not submit their prayer requests anonymously, be telling you here on the broadcast every week how we can be praying for those in our remote family. One family, um, the Heimrichs, that uh, were members of our church locally in Bethesda when they lived here. They moved to Oregon about two years ago, the Portland area. And um, Gary Heimrich, who is the father, Juanita, and their son, Chase, uh, Gary had a bone marrow transplant last year. And he just wrote to say, I'm watching and reading. I'm watching and reading all you send to the flock. I guess he means the the church. We are almost one year into my bone marrow transplant. We have been blessed by the mighty hands indeed. We miss you and the whole congregation a lot. Juanita and Chase are still getting a hold of our drastically changing family. All of our lives are so unnormal. We ask for your prayers for my whole family and for Juanita's as well as the children that are growing up so fast. We ask that you would help, uh, we ask that you would pray for us, that God would slow us down. Blessings to you and your family. We love you. We miss the church. Stay just as you are, except laugh and be happy. (laughs) This is a man that knows me, obviously. Uh, So Gary and Juanita and Chase, thank you for uh, sending that to us. We will be praying for you and your family this week, not only here in Bethesda, but all of us who are watching this broadcast as well. Before we really do conclude today, I want to let you know about a couple of things that are going on in our community this coming week. First of all, If you are in need of food, you or your loved ones or anyone that you know, maybe just someone you met on the street, please come to our building at 1230 p.m. Monday through Friday. If you go around to the back entrance of the church, we are partnering with an amazing organization called Bethesda Cares that is serving free meals five days a week at 1230 p.m outside of the back entrance of our church. Come and take as much as you need. No strings attached. We just we just do not want anyone going hungry. Secondly, if you would like to discuss today's topic that we looked at further, this topic of words, encouragement, filters that we put in place to keep the harmful stuff from coming out. We're gathering on Zoom this Tuesday for something we call Cultivating the Heart at 7.30 p.m. You're invited to join us, whether you go to this church, another church, or no church at all, whether you're here in the DMV or somewhere else in the world, 7.30 p.m. on Tuesday, Eastern Standard Time, United States. Click in and join us. Information about that is at churchinbethesda.org slash cultivate. Finally, If you would like to partner with us in all of the good that we are doing in the world, if you would like to donate to Church in Bethesda's work here in our nation's capital, we have a bunch of easy ways set up for you to do that. You can find all of them listed and linked at churchinbethesda.org slash donate. I also want to say thank you to all of you out there who support us prayerfully and financially on a regular basis. We couldn't do what we're doing without your support. So from the bottom of our hearts to yours, thank you so much. 
Until next Sunday, whether we see you back here online or in person at 11 a.m., online 10 a.m., in person at 11 a.m., we pray that you go in peace. We pray that you would make peace wherever you go and that you would always be aware of the filter between your mind and your mouth. Amen.